All right, now, yesterday we uh, discussed the morning line and the importance of knowing the percentages of the morning line. And, uh, of course, today, as always, the handicapping is already done, so we want to bear that in mind. But today we're going to talk a little bit about variables versus consistencies. And uh, I'm going to point out that uh, in the school of handicapping, uh, very little is learned over a great many years, and that's in evidence, uh, because we've been doing handicapping for well over a hundred years, and uh, past performance handicapping at that for over a hundred years, yet uh, the percentages of winners in horse racing versus people that aren't winning uh, pretty much stay the same. It's uh, 95 to 97 percent uh, losing side and maybe 3 to 5 percent on the winning side. So with all the handicapping going on, I always like to think that this makes my point uh, that the handicapping is already done and the re-handicapping isn't accomplishing very much. But the reason is, is because handicappers deal with variables pretty much probably 80-90% as opposed to learning any consistencies and uh, past performance handicappers are usually very well convinced that there aren't any consistencies in horse racing. It's all up and down, uh, back and forth uh, changes by the hour, by the day, by the race, by uh, by the half card before the fourth race is one thing and after that something else and race to race and everything else. And so they're concerned with all these variables. And the problem with variables, if we just take one main variable, let's take uh, speed and uh, time pretty much go together, really. Uh, speed is a uh, derivative of time, I guess. I mean, everybody got tired of trying to deal with time because it was such a variable and had so many variations to it that we went over to trying to put a number on time with speed figures. But then we run into the same thing, all the other variables. Because we've got fast speed, medium speed, low speed, uh, slow speed, turn speed, stretch speed, back stretch speed, out of the gate speed, you know, speed to wire, late speed, early speed. You know, we got all these variables to look at with speed. But we don't look at any of the consistencies. Uh, and if we don't learn the consistencies of it, we never understand the variables. All we do is go back and forth. So this is what has happened with handicapping. But if we look at the consistencies and we examine the consistencies over a long period of time, uh, and maybe it won't take so long, uh, it just depends on you and uh, how well you pick things up, you start to learn some of the consistencies uh, from the consistencies that are there in the first place, you learn other consistencies uh, if you're looking for them, and if you believe there are consistencies in the first place. And uh, one of the one of the big consistencies we covered yesterday was the uh, morning line and the age-old percentages of the favorite wins a third of the race uh, races today. The second choice uh, is. 18, 20 percent, together they win half the races today, but nobody pays any attention to any of that. And uh, usually uh, they, you hear that and it's like uh, you hear laughter also because uh, people don't believe it. But uh, these are things you can check out on paper without betting any horses and just do a little research for yourself as you follow horse racing if you'd like. And just see how many races the favorite wins today. How many races does the favorite and second choice win today? And you'll pretty much see that it's about three or four and five and six. So uh, my, my point with that is that uh, nobody really knows between which one or the other is going to win. Uh, it's always just a guess. No matter how much handicapping is done, you know, some people guess between the favorite uh, or the second choice. I mean, if, if we just those two horses in every race, uh, we're going to win half the races today, but you're going to have to decide which one. And this is the problem. Which one? That's what handicapping uh, 
theoretically is all about which one to bet, which one to bet. Uh, and that points out that what uh, betting on horses is all about is just making a betting decision, not figuring out which one, just making a good betting decision. Uh, and you can try to figure out which one all you want, but it comes down to which one do you want to bet. Uh, and a lot of that will be psychological and you wind up betting the one you want to bet anyway. Uh, some people just want to bet long shots. So they, they do. Some people want to bet this or they want to bet a fast horse, they want to bet a slow horse, they want to bet a great horse. Uh, you know, so they were back to the variables again. We want to bet the class droppers. Well, what kind of class droppers? Uh, you, want to, you want to bet horses that are going from allowance down to claimers or do you want to bet various claiming class droppers? Or would you rather bet the claimers that go up in class off of wins? Or, you know, would you like to bet the horses that won the last race, or would you like to bet a horse that won a sixth last race? Uh, and all these variables, you just toss around. But if we go into the percentages, the favorite wins 30%, the second choice wins 18, 20, the third choice is 17 to 22%. Those three cover 67%. And the fourth choice, he's in there for about another 8% to bring it up to 75 for those four. Uh, and the rest of them, you know, they're about 25%. And what happens is, most people want to bet the 25% because the prices are, are big. Uh, the odds are huge, the odds are higher, that's the ones we want to win. Uh, we want to bet on them. We want to bet a horse that pays 50 bucks to win and 30 bucks to win. Uh, we want 15 to 1, 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 17 to 1, 25 to 1. But those are all the horses whose records also stink, and we can't see anything good about them. But we have a consistency there to study, and that consistency is that they win 25% of the races, no matter what you do. No matter how much handicapping you do and tossing variables, these guys are going to win 25%. And these guys are going to win 75%. So you can do all the handicapping you want or re-handicapping, but this will stay the same. Now, when you start to question that, think about it, then you start to get a feel for why I say that handicapping is already done. And it doesn't really matter how you do it. Uh, whether it's trip handicapping, pace handicapping, speed handicapping, uh, just regular, plain old, old-fashioned, conventional class handicapping, if you want to do it that way. Uh, if you want to handicap the trainers, handicap the jockeys, uh, whatever. Whatever method you want, and you want to put them all together, I mean, toss more variables. More variables, more variables, and more variables, but all you're doing is tossing more variables. None of the variables are consistent enough by themselves, and even added together, you don't know which group of variables really has any impact, really. But if you toss all the variables, and just got down to the consistency, and that's the only thing you observed, you would find that you would have uh, a much better picture of horse racing and the reality of horse racing if you weren't so distracted by all the variables, which are various. So if you get down and study the consistencies, and the other major consistency to study is the ability of the horse. And once you start studying that, you find that it is the one constant that if you start to learn about it, everything else starts to make a lot of sense and you find all the other consistencies that there are to study and you get better and better. But you've got to have some reasonable measurement of the ability of the horse to start with. And that is not handicapped. And that's proven, proven over 100 years. So my vote is we accept that. 
and we get into the ability of the horse. And that is what Ability X Ratings is all about. And that's what it's for, that's what it does. It's a past performance product, it's not a selection sheet. And uh, today is the 16th of June, yesterday was the 15th of June, and in yesterday's morning line video I reported that the Ability X Ratings uh, 5 by 5 method for the pick 3, pick 4, and pick 5 at Churchill Downs won all of them on Thursday. Well, it won all of the pick 3's, pick 4's, and pick 5's again on Friday. Today is Saturday, yesterday was Friday. So the 5 by 5 ability X ratings, uh, 5 by 5 method in the pick bets, which includes the favorite, second choice and third choice, and two horses that are in there from just ability and ability only, with no other variables whatsoever. And that went one uh, all the races on the car. So, uh, and of course, uh, a lot of people say, well, that's easy to win all the races on the car when you've got five horses, but. Uh, the thing of it is, you need at least two, uh, two and a half times yesterday, the day before, tomorrow, today, next week, and for the last hundred years. You need to know which of these to put in there also. Which 25% of long shots you need in every race in your 5x5. Five five. And then you've got it pretty well covered, 95% because uh, you've got 67% here, maybe 70, uh, then 25%, you have 95% covered. So uh, with the 5x5, five five, there's a possibility there's still one that you're not covered. Because another thing that has changed in recent years with horse racing is that horse racing finally has accomplished its dream of having more contenders in a race than the handicapper can well deal with. So uh, handicapping doesn't deal with five and six sound, solid contenders in a race anymore. Handicapping might have had a shot at dealing with three contenders, but the 60s and, and 70s, uh, they're gone. So. You know, now we're into the 21st century, and now we're looking at horse racing supports a full menu of exotic bets, and we've got uh, five to six. That's supposed to be a five. We've got five to six solid, sound contenders in every race. And in races where there's only six horses, yeah, that pretty much means that all of them are contenders. So, uh, you know, there's plenty of horses put in races, and, uh, you know, the, the racetracks are getting pretty good at loading all the races up with good contenders. So, uh, it makes uh, handicapping or re handicapping even tougher, and you're still just tossing around a bunch of variables and taking a shot at whatever it is you're deciding to bet. So, you know, my my advice is to focus on the betting decision, learn the consistencies, focus on the betting decision, and learn to make good betting decisions. Because it just doesn't matter how well you handicap or how much you know about it or anything else. It still just amounts to you're redoing something that's already done, and in the end, you're just guessing at which one you like better. And that's what you got. So. Uh, the consistencies are also well revealed when you're looking at the race in the perspective of ability, and again, Ability X Ratings is all about that. So I suggest picking up some Ability X Ratings and start studying the consistencies of horse racing, and uh, you'll be learning very, very quickly and making better betting, betting decisions. So. Uh, you're invited. Stop by uh, horseplayeru, one word, dot com, uh, letter U, horseplayeru, uh, ability X ratings with hyphens, dot info, or at home horseplayer, 
www.ableworksplayer.com. At home works player, all one word. And uh, take a look at Ability X ratings. There's a lot of information. And uh, there are many, many of these videos on YouTube, so you might want to look through a few of them. And uh, what I'm saying might make a little more sense to you. Uh, and then that's the time to get uh, on the subscriber list for Ability X ratings and learn how to make good betting decisions. Uh, it's very easy. It might look a little complicated, but it's not. It's just a little different. You're looking at ability. You're looking at consistencies instead of variables. And the great thing is the consistencies just keep happening, so there's no way really to do it wrong. Uh, if you don't get all the consistencies down in the first week, well, there's the next week and the next week and the next week. Uh, so whatever your pace is, and you know, there's no pressure, nobody has to bet, but tremendous way to learn. So stop by, check it out, and uh, maybe I'll see you again there. Thank you very much.